confirmation of faith. We believe that our lives are held within the encircling love of God, who knows our names and recognizes our deepest needs. We believe that Jesus Christ is the divine child of the living God, and that his grace is like living waters that can never be exhausted. We believe that the Holy Spirit guides in the arid desert as well as in green pastures, and that hard times and disciplines are also loving gifts. We believe that our journey has a purpose and a destination, and that our paths lead to a human glory we cannot yet imagine. We believe that in the church we are fellow pilgrims on the road. And that we are called to love one another as God loves us. This is our faith, and we are humbled to profess in Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ, who gave himself for our sins to set us free from the present evil age, according to the will of our God and Father, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. Well, when Paul opened a letter with that kind of greeting, the church knew it was working well, and not all of his churches received such a robust greeting. I wonder how would he have opened a letter to Snellville Community Church? Perhaps something like this. Grace to you and peace, Snellville Community Church. You are running the race well. Keep pressing to the goal. Keep it ever before you. Strain forward to what lies ahead, and the heavenly prize of God shall be yours. Amen. Well, welcome to this fourth Sunday of Lent. You see those black pad folios in your pews. Please uh, sign in your attendance and then pass that pad on down to others in your pew. And we welcome all of our first time guests. And please, if you will, include your email and phone number on the attendance pad. And to our online worshipers, you may sign in through the connect link in the comments section. You will see on the screen our joys and concerns this morning. And we wish a very happy birthday to our youth there on the screen. And we lift up for your daily prayers this week. Those persons on our concerns list, on our cancer list, on our missionary list, and those men and women in uniform in the military. And now let us prepare our hearts and minds as we go to our God in prayer. Father, we do come here joyfully as we gather together in this sacred house of worship. And we thank you for putting us in the family of God here at Snellville Community Church. 
and we thank you for giving us Christian brothers and sisters to encourage each other and to do life together. Father, you have ever been our guide and our guardian. When we wander from you, you welcome us back with open arms. Father, following Jesus is hard work. It's just so easy to turn away, to complain, to grumble. Thank you for never giving up on us. Help us to turn back to you when we drift away. Because of our unfaithfulness, Father, <clears throat> you sent your son Jesus to forgive and to set us free, free from fear, free from anger, free from despair, free from depression. We are free to soar like eagles, free to leave our baggage behind us and to fly forward to be the very best disciples we can be. Such a good feeling, Father, such a good feeling. Father, may we walk this Lenten journey with your son Jesus, knowing it is he who redeems, he who forgives, he who heals, and may we follow his light of life, may we follow the source of all love. Dear Lord, let it be, amen. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'd like to add my welcome along with Pastor Lynn. Thank you for being here in person and those who are watching online across the country. We're grateful for your presence today. This past week has been a great week. It's been a busy week. It culminated on last night with me attending with a few of our church members state championship game in Macon. Our Grayson boys and girls won the state championship. <laughs> girls went undefeated. Boys only lost two. And it was a wonderful opportunity to watch some of our local kids do what they do best. 
That's the way the week ended for me. This is the way it began. On Tuesday, I had an opportunity to have breakfast with one of the parents from uh, the kids from our Hoop Haven program. We partnered with a nonprofit called Hoop Haven. There are three coaches that live in the area, and they teach basketball skills for basketball and for life. And so I had a chance to have breakfast with one of the parents. And it was a fascinating thing to hear what he had to say. It shouldn't surprise you how grateful he was for your generosity. He couldn't stop talking about how grateful he and the other parents are for us providing a space that is meaningful, that is safe, and that is well kept for their children to play. Later on that Tuesday, after Bible study, I had a chance to talk to about seven of those parents, and one by one, without talking to the parent that I had breakfast with, they all said the same thing. Friends, that type of feedback doesn't happen by chance. It's intentional. And that is a result of what you do here at the church. That is a direct result of your generosity. Friends, when you give to Snellville Community Church, it makes a direct impact. And parents who come here for their kids to get something meaningful that they can't get anywhere else, they get it because of your generosity. So I am so thankful for what you do and how you do it. No matter how big or how small your gift is, no gift is insignificant because it helps us to make a local impact in Snellville. So as I ask the ushers to come forward, when you place your gift into the basket, or whether you give online, or whether you give by recurring or mail your check, know that each gift makes a difference. Thank you for your generosity. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we give you thanks for celebrations, for state championships, and we thank you, God, that you are a generous God and that you call us to follow you. And so we thank you for the generosity of the people in the pews and the people who are online that we give our gifts. So God, use these gifts, bless them so they may make a direct impact in this community and beyond for the kingdom's sake. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you.
troubles of this world. I'm going home to live with God. There's another song that says, I got shoes. You got shoes. All God children got shoes. When I get to heaven, I'm going to put on my shoes and I'm going to walk all over God's heaven. Heaven. Oh, friends, I'm grateful for you being here today. As we continue this worship service, may everything that we say and do honor God. May our attitudes be such that they're turned toward God. May our hearts be attuned to who God is. And may we take an attitude of prayer. We're in a sermon series, and that series is entitled Unconditional, God's Love for Us. We are walking through different Bible passages to help us on the journey to Easter. And like any journey, it's an adventure. It's like a road trip. There's highs, there are lows. Sometimes there's anticipation and excitement. Sometimes there's confusion. But God is always with us. And so today, we're going to focus on prayer. And the Bible lesson that I want to call your attention to, if you have your Bibles or if you have your electronic devices, is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, reading verses 1, 11 through 15. 2 Chronicles chapter 7, reading verses 11 through 15. If you do not have a Bible, the words will be printed on the screen that you can read along with me. Hear the word of God according to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, beginning with verse 11. So Solomon finished the Lord's temple and the royal palace. Everything that had entered, in, everything that had entered Solomon's heart to do for the Lord's temple and for his own palace succeeded. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon at night and said to him, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple of sacrifice. 
if I shut the sky so that there is no rain, or if I command the grasshopper to consume the land, or if I send pestilence on my people and my people who bear my name, humble themselves, pray and seek my face, and turn from their evil ways, then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. My eyes will now be open and my ears attentive to this place. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I'm going to take a risk and ask a question. Here's the question. On a scale of one to five, one being extremely low, five being extremely high, how would you rate your prayer life? I told you I'm taking a risk at doing that. You don't have to answer to me. But I suspect that you are five when things are going well. And sometimes when life is unplanned and unexpected things happen, that five might drop to four. For some, it might drop to two. Others, one. If we're honest, we're not always at five. And if you are at five at all times, then what I see here is a hologram because you're not living in the same world that I live in. You're up in heaven, and this is just a hologram of you. And so touch your neighbor to make sure that they're not a hologram. <laughs> Most of us want to be at five. And there are times where we are a five in our prayer lives. Sometimes we're at ones. And there is this threshold between a one and a five. Any given day, we will fluctuate between one and five. In fact, any given moment, we will fluctuate between one and five. Maybe you're not like me, but I have to remember that before I give my unsolicited editorial comments that will not be pleasing to God about somebody who's done me wrong. Did you get that? I must stop and pray for that person because it's hard to be mad at somebody if you're praying for them particularly if that person that is being uh, uh, accosted, you're the problem. I, I like to receive those prayers because if I'm the person that's causing the problem, please, please pray for me. And I'll pray for you. One to five. In our Bible lesson, we hear about Solomon, King Solomon, King David's son. Now, Solomon was given an opportunity by God to ask for anything that he wished. Almost sounds like a fairy tale, but Solomon asked for wisdom. And what a gift to have wisdom, to know when to keep your mouth shut. Just because you can think it don't mean you can say it. I'm talking to me on that one. Because that's when I'm at a one. Solomon builds a temple. And it takes seven years to build a temple. Many of us have been trying to achieve a life goal. And it has not come to pass. And when we started on that journey of building whatever goal you have for yourself, chances are your prayer life was at five. The longer it takes you to achieve that, your prayer life goes from five, four, three, two, one, and then there's a blast off because you get upset. And so Solomon 
take seven years to build this temple. God had promised Solomon's ancestors that God will dwell with him. Not Solomon's parents, Solomon's ancestors. Way back hundreds of years ago where Solomon's ancestors crossed the Red Sea and was in a desert in the wilderness. God says that I will be with you. And so they made a tabernacle, basically a church on wheels. What an image. A church on wheels. That's another sermon for another day. And now Solomon is building God a home on earth. But before Solomon does that, before everything's completed, Solomon calls the entire community, I want you to hear this, he calls the entire community to pray. Before he did anything, because he was given the gift of wisdom, he called the community to pray. And when we pray, prayer is simply talking and listening to God. We got that talking part down. We struggle a little bit on that listening part. Prayer is talking and listening to God. Let me read you Solomon's prayer because it sets up our text for today. You can go back and read this at home if you like. Solomon's prayer to God is found in 2 Chronicles 6, verses 24 through 27. I want you to hear the prayer. If your people Israel are defeated before an enemy because they have sinned against you and they return to you, and praise your name. And they pray and plead for mercy before you in this temple. May you hear in heaven and forgive the sins of your people Israel. May you restore to them the land that you gave to their ancestors. When the skies are shut and there is no rain because they turn, they have sinned against you and they pray toward this place and praise your name and turn from their sins because you are afflicting them. May you hear in heaven and forgive the sins of your servant and your people so that you may teach them the way that is good to walk in. May you send rain on your land that you gave the people for your inheritance. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 sometimes is taken out of this context. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 is a direct answer to King Solomon's prayer. You've rehearsed it, you've said it, you've heard it. If my people who are called by their name, my by name, will humble themselves, pray and seek my faith, and I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. That is a direct response of God to Solomon. And here is the point. God answers prayer. God answers prayer. When we pray, God wants to answer. When we Go to God, God will hear. When we ask God, God will forgive. When we turn away from our selfish desires, God will heal. God heals, God hears, and God forgives. That is the point of prayer. And so wherever you are in your prayer life, if you're at a five, wonderful. Know that there are going to be days where you're going to drop down to a four. And so when you pray, know that God will hear you. 
There are things that you've been praying for, that you've been asking for, and they haven't materialized. Keep praying. Keep praying because God will answer. And if you don't know how to pray, here is a way to pray. If you can spell the word prayer, pray, then you can pray. P-R-A-Y. You can write this down if you want to take notes. The first letter is P. That stands for praise. You give praise to who God is. If you don't know how to do that, then I would recommend looking at the Psalms, the book of Psalms in the Bible. If you don't know which Psalm to look at, let me give you one. Psalms 1 50. It starts out this way. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. So start out with praising God for who he is. And friends, if you don't believe me, I dare you to try God. When you start praising God, somehow God's praise overshadows your problems. Your problems get smaller as your praises get larger. So the first is P is to praise. The second letter is R. R stands for repent. The word repent is not just about feeling sorry that you've done something wrong. It's more than that. The word repent literally means to turn. It means to turn from your own self-reliance, particularly if you are not honoring God in your life. Turn from your self-reliance and turn toward God. Seek God's face. Seek God's presence. So first, you praise God. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Second, you, you repent. You turn away from yourself, turn toward God, and then, and only then, do you do what we've been accustomed to doing. We say the A. We ask. It's only after you praise God and turn away from yourself that you ask. <coughs> and that's when you put your request and you make them known to God. No matter how big, no matter how small, God wants to hear from you. And then you find yourself at why. And this is the hardest part of prayer. You yield. In other words, you surrender. You surrender and let go of your outcome. That's hard, friends. But friends, if we're going to follow God, it has to be God's way or no way. We have to surrender. That doesn't mean we give up. That means we let go. Why? Because God is a God who wants to do immeasurably more than we can ever ask or imagine. The problem is we don't understand that. Our life experiences have taught us not to believe that. But friends, let me tell you one thing. If you never hear anything else, I say God is consistent. God is trustworthy. God is faithful. And God is worthy to be praised. Whether you're at a five in your prayer life or whether you're at a one, God will be consistent. And God's love for us is unconditional. It is not tick for tat, it forgives. The Bible says, if we turn from our wicked ways. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I have a hard time with the word wicked. I'm just being honest. And so, wicked is not the movie Wicked. I know you probably have some ideas of some behaviors that you think are wicked. And maybe sometimes over tea we can share those behaviors. 
at least talk about them, not indulge in them. If we indulge in them, then we've got to do that P-R-A-Y thing. But whatever you have as your definition of wicked, I'd ask that you consider this. God has a bigger picture of what wicked is, and here it is. Anything that is not God-honoring in our lives is wicked. Did you hear that? When we think we can control things or do things, and we make God an afterthought, that, in the Bible, is wicked. When we decide that we know what's best and we'll do it our way or the highway, according to the Bible, that's wicked. Friends, this is why relationships are so hard and they're so messy because each one of us has a way that seems right to us. Each one of us wants to win at life. And if we're honest, there is a little bit of com competition, competitive spirit in each one of us because we like to win. And in relationships, it is not always about winning and losing. It's not always about being right or wrong. If you got kids or grandkids, you know this. If you're married or have a significant other, you know this. If you're in a Sunday school class, you know this. If you're in any type of place where there's somebody that's not you and you're interacting with them, you know this. And that's just human relationships. And when we deal with God, we bring the same perspective. And so here's hope for you if you're at one in your prayer life. Sometimes God allows us to get to one because sometimes it's only when we're at one that we return to God. Because when everything's going well, we thank God, but we, we continue to live on cloud nine. We, we continue to enjoy the sunshine. But, but when the clock changes and an old man winter decides that he's still going to show up, we begin to complain. When, when it gets a little weary or dreary outside and, and the weather is not perfect and it gets a little rainy or it gets dark, we begin to complain. Maybe the one is where God wants us. And so friends, if you're at a one, here's the good news. God hears, God will forgive, and God will heal you. Heal doesn't mean cure, but heal brings back that which was separated. So whatever your separation is, maybe it's separation between you and your body because you, your body has decided that it's going to revolt on you and do things that your brain says it shouldn't do. Maybe, maybe you have aches and pains in places you didn't know that you are going to have aches and pains. Maybe, maybe your eyesight is such that, that cataracts and, and glaucoma show up and, and you can't see as well. Maybe, maybe you have this medication and the medication has certain side effects and, and, and you're afraid to, of the side effects more than the medication. Wherever you are, that can lead you to a one. God will hear your prayer. God will forgive you from turning away and God wants to heal you that's what prayer is God hears and listens and God will answer your prayer wherever you are today maybe you need to learn how to pray maybe we need to have a time of prayer for the whole church not just about our sicknesses those are important. 
not just about our relationships, those were important, but perhaps we need to begin to pray for God's direction for this church. As I said in my blog this week, I've got an idea in my head of where we ought to be. But if I strive for that direction, it won't work. I have to surrender. And friends, so do you. I don't know who I'm talking to. That's the Easter message, is surrender. And when everything seems hopeless and lost, there is a resurrection. That is what Easter is. That's what we celebrate. Somebody ought to say hallelujah this morning. God is getting ready to give a breakthrough for somebody today. God wants to give you a miracle if you have eyes to see, if you have ears to hear, which means is your heart turned toward God's presence? It means not my will, but your will be done. Oh, I know I might be making some folk uncomfortable, but friends, I got to tell the truth this morning. If God be for you, who can be against you? Amen. This is the faith that we have. We walk by faith and not by sight and trust that God has more than you can ask or imagine for your life. Those who have ears, let them hear.
God's people pray, God heals, God hears, and God forgives. Friends, I want to thank you for being here in person and for you the, who are watching online across the country. There are three things that I want you to go with today that will help you to stay in touch with the church, find places to fit in, and to volunteer. On next Sunday, right after this service, we're having an informational session from the ministry council. We are an independent church. That means we are self-governing. That means every decision that's made, we make them. Like a college student who has left his mom or son, uh, dad's home going to college, we are now independent. And so the ministry council is the organization, the governing body that makes all the decisions of the church. We want to be transparent. Here's an opportunity for you to come here and ask questions about what's happening in the church as we continue to seek God's will to do life together for this community. Also, Holy Week is vast, vastly upon us. Holy Week is the week that Jesus turns his face and goes toward the cross. There are several services that we will observe. Our Monday Thursday service will be in our sanctuary at 6 o'clock, and our Good Friday service will be in the sanctuary at 7 o'clock. Uh, Easter Sunday, we will have three services, 7 o'clock right outside here, sunrise service, breakfast following. 9.30, we will have our praise and worship service in our C building. If you don't know where that is, that is the building with the big C on it, and it has a flat roof, and we invite you to join there. And 11 o'clock will be at this space and place. We hope that you will find a time to join at one or all three of those services. And finally, as you leave, out in the gathering room to my right and to your left, we have sign-up sheets for a community work day. We're having a church work day on April 27th. There are opportunities for you to serve in projects. And friends, at my request, no one will have to stand up on a ladder. And so we want you, if you're able, to participate. Friends, I'm grateful for your presence, and my prayer for you this week is that God will go in front of you to lead you. May God be behind you to keep you from straying. May God hover above you to protect you and drop underneath you to support you. And this week, when you find your prayer life at one, my prayer is the God who hears, who forgives, and heals will walk beside you because the promise he gave never, ever to leave you. Thank you for being here. Please speak to someone on the way out. God bless you. See you next week. Thank you.